Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley were head to head last night in Iowa at the in the final debate before the first votes of the campaign. It came hours after Chris Christie announced he's dropping out of the race. Where does the race stand four days from the Iowa caucuses? The director of the Marquette Law School poll, Charles Franklin, is here. Welcome back. Hi, Charles. Good to, be here. Good to see you. So did anything come out of the debate last night? Well, I think both sides, both Haley and DeSantis, did well enough. Neither of them committed some major mistake. I'm not sure that either one of them landed a knockout punch either. So I think supporters of each candidate can look at it and say that was a good enough debate. I think my person won. A little hard to see the debate itself shifting a lot of voters as we're now just a handful of days away from Monday night's caucus. But neither, neither one of them went after Trump. Just no, each that, other. that was a telling thing that, again, they chose to go after each other, and they really did go after each other. But they stayed away from going after Trump with just a couple of small exceptions. What impact does Chris Christie dropping out have? In, in other words, yeah. his supporters, where do they go? Well, very little in Iowa because he's done nothing there and the polling shows him with minuscule support. But looking ahead a week to New Hampshire, uh, which is a week from this coming Tuesday, uh, Christie has been getting about 11 percent in the Iowa, in the New Hampshire polls. And so where does that go? It's certainly more likely to go to Haley than it is to go to Trump. I wouldn't expect much of it to go to DeSantis. Um, but you can't always predict where that vote's going to go. Uh, and it's still only 11 percent. Uh, we do have new polling out of Iowa today showing Haley picking up into a substantial second place, whereas she's been slightly behind DeSantis in Iowa. That's just one poll. I wouldn't think too much of it. But if there is some movement, maybe that's for her. That could boost her if she surprises us all and does a really solid second place finish with DeSantis well back, that would boost Haley even further in New Hampshire, where at this point that's her strongest state. And what, hap what, is, what does that do to Trump if he doesn't perform as well as the polls suggest? You know, the polling, again, is consistently showing him at about 51 percent in Iowa. That's enough to win. Even if he dropped off a few points, it's enough to win. He could surprise us and get 60-something percent. That would be really strong for him and would discourage the others. If he somehow ended up in the mid to low 40s, that would be kind of a shocker and would change the narrative, even if he finishes in first place. So there's still some reason to tune in on Monday night. <laughs> and it's going to be one of the coldest caucuses in history. Turn and turnout is really going to be a huge factor in Iowa, won't yep. it? Well, we challenge these Iowa voters, you know, they're hardy stock. <laughs> yeah, and, just like us. But, but these cold, cold nights, I, I don't think it's going to be snowing that night, but it's always a challenge. Um, DeSantis has put a tremendous amount of effort into Iowa, yeah. including a turnout, but Haley has been outspending DeSantis in Iowa, so she's in maybe a good place. You know, Trump is confident that his voters will show up no matter what. So there's a lot of opinions here. We'll find out Monday night. But this is no mail-in balloting. I mean, this is right. you, people have to show up. That's right. And caucus. It's not like a vote. It's a weird, a weird thing. It is weird. Uh, certainly by our standards of primaries, where you just it's like any other election. The way it works for the Republicans is you have to show up at a particular place and time in the evening. It's not all day voting. Um, that may not be your regular polling place. It could be a school or a church or someplace. And with the Republicans, you actually do fill out a paper ballot and turn it in. Democrats have a more complicated situation, but they're not doing a caucus this year. Uh, but it still takes your evening. It still requires traveling possibly to an unfamiliar place, listening to some speeches, and then filling out that paper it's ballot. It's going to be very interesting. Very Maybe we'll see you on Tuesday? I think so. All right. It's a date. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Well, we'll see if we're surprised or not. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks, Charles. Thanks, Charles. Have a good weekend.